Hey guys, today I wanted to talk about electrodynamics. Um, it's one of those classes that tend to be really difficult, but also one of the most interesting classes um, I've ever had. I can say with confidence that uh, this semester is by far my favorite class. And um, like there is the one thing that I noticed about uh, ENM classes in general is that um, like in my school, there are three classes um, you have to take um, in your undergrad uh, when you um, um, take um, e &M. So e &M one, e &M two, and e &M three. And when you go from e &M one and to e &M two, I find that uh, it's not as steep of a jump as when you go from e &M two to e &M three. e &M three is uh, currently a, a fourth year um, electrodynamics course. It's the course where you get to apply all of the knowledge that you've learned in the previous two um, and actually use it in some applications. You learn how to use it in applications and um, you also learn um, how to use all that big boy math that you use in your vector calculus class and mathematical physics classes uh, from which I had two. Um, so the math involved here is what makes this uh, course so difficult for me personally. Um, all the assignments we have so far tend to be really lengthy. Um, we could have two problems or three problems and the homework will be like 20 pages long uh, worth of writing. Um, so with that being said, all the difficulties that it brings with that um, are actually um, a good thing. Um, it's a good thing because when you struggle, you learn the most. And whenever I get those breakthroughs, um, I learn the most. Uh, I really, really enjoy um, getting those breakthroughs and learning a ton of new information which I missed before. Um, it's, it's an incredible feeling. I love it. And um, today I wanted to particularly share um, a few tips uh, that I learned through my struggle with the last homework assignment, um, what to keep in mind when you do in m problems, especially when they involve time, time dependence uh, of any sort. Um, so really, um, today's uh, video is um, mostly about the three things that um, I found really helpful when you uh, deal with problems um, um, like solving for vector potential or like finding B field from the vector, vector potential. Um, so in general, we are on chapter 10 right now. And so the homework set uh, was on the chapter 10 on working with potentials, scalar, vector potential, and um, uh, through those finding the divergence, uh, oh my goodness, what I'm talking about, finding the electric and magnetic field. Um, so, First tip that I wanted to give you guys is when you work with some vector field, say vector potential field. I actually got some um, things scribbled here on the board to help me illustrate the point that I wanted to make. Um, suppose you have some vector field. Well, here in particular, I chose a B and A field. Um, I mean, B here is the time independent, so it has a simpler form. If it's time dependent, it will be uh, a bit more difficult expression here. And um, you can find B if you know A, like that's one of the ways to find the B, um, the easiest way, like one of the easier ways, instead of finding B straight from that expression, uh, which involves the quadratic in the denominator. Um, but using um, uh, like apply, trying to apply divergence and curl to expression like this can be quite tricky, uh, especially um, if um, you know that there is time dependence. And um, what I didn't realize, uh, so when I started, uh, like in the last homework assignment, I had to take the divergence of, the, of this expression and I got stuck, like I got plain stuck. Um, and Good thing I was able to pinpoint where my problem was. Um, so one of the things, like when you have expression like this, you have to have to keep in mind uh, two things. One is what is your integration variable? 
here we have uh, a source of our um, vector potential field. Uh, so we have uh, some charge density that varies with, uh, varies with time. And um, so that, of course, is um, dependent on the position vector. So we have some, let's say, charge density here represented with yellow. And um, we integrate over the whole charge density here. Um, like it could be uh, a surface. Uh, it could be uh, a volume charge density. Um, um, yeah, so if, if you're taking this integral, you are integrating about uh, over the source variables. But if you want to find um, a field that's caused by this charge distribution <clears throat> or charge density, um, we're talking about some point in space somewhere around that uh, source. And um, the properties, like how that uh, point in space um, is changing is um, easily described with its divergence and curl. Like from those two things, you can um, uh, infer all the things you, you need to know pretty much. But the thing um, to keep in mind here is that when you take divergence and curl, you're not taking it with respect to the position uh, variable here. You are taking it with respect to the um, test point variable. So with that being said, you have an expression that has two of the variables um, in it, um, one that depends uh, on the, um, so one variable that describes the position and another variable that describes the uh, location in space, well, your test point location. And um, these things um, really need to be um, uh, handled with care uh, if you don't want to get really stuck and confused. Um, so that's one thing that you want to keep in mind. Make sure you understand what you're integrating over and make sure that you also know um, what you take your derivatives with respect to. Um, I hope to make um, another video when I do um, derive the divergence of the vector potential um, because I find that it's, it's a really useful thing to do. It's, it, I learned a ton from this exercise personally. Um, so I hope to walk you through the whole um, derivation. Um, another thing is that when you do that, you also have to keep in mind that you have really great tool uh, or tools in the form of your um, fundamental theorems. Oops, oops. So uh, fundamental, th fundamental theorems. Um, in this particular case, the divergence theorem was particularly helpful. And your product rules for um, um, divergences and curls and gradients. Um, I used rule number five and six here. Uh, no, number five and seven, whatever. Uh, I'll, I'll um, point this out ex more explicitly in the next video. Um, but anyways, uh, the three things basically to keep in mind is the one that I discussed on the board and the two that you got to make use of your uh, product rules and uh, fundamental theorems. These things really help me um, to work through this example, uh, through this problem. Um, I think that's pretty much all I wanted to tell today. Um, so I hope that uh, this little um, tour into the ENM uh, world was helpful. And I will link below um, some of the sources that were helpful for me personally to deal with this homework set. Um, those are the couple pages in Griffiths which I missed before. And especially the little footnotes that I never noticed before um, that have really good tips. And also when I was searching up in Google uh, how to deal with vector potential, I found a really good paper. It's a short paper, but it's uh, very nicely um, uh, explaining very nicely what the vector potential is and how it was derived, uh, what its physical meaning is and applications. It's really helpful. I went, worked through this paper yesterday evening um, and uh, also uh, reference to Griffiths, um, really, really useful um, um, and worthwhile um, spending your time on. So this will be also linked uh, in the description. And uh, other than that, I'll hope to um, 
record the video on deriving the uh, divergence of the vector potential if you guys are interested. And um, yeah, I'll leave it um, by that. So thank you for stopping by and watching my rant. Have a good day. And I hope to see you um, very soon. Bye.